Good evening. My name is Howard Gale. I was a little nervous coming out here, and uh, I took two Xanax and a Viagra. So I don't really give a fuck what I say. I'm thinking of becoming a transgender. <laughs> that will allow me to eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> Actually, I have nothing funny to say. I'm depressed. <laughs> what is it with comedians and depression? You know, funny does not mean happy. Humor is a counterphobic response to darkness and sadness. And it helps me f put a funny, you know, role to despair. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm depressed. <laughs> I, uh, I went to a gay club. He asked me for sex identification. I showed them it wasn't enough. <laughs> My sex life? Infrequent. And that's not two words. My, my day started out with a Bible quote on my iPhone. <laughs> Word of God, Leviticus 2.10. You're fucked, it's not going to get any better. <laughs> the, good, the good thing about depression is that you, you never have to make your bed. You're always in it. <laughs> So I called my psychiatrist, and of course I got his answering machine. And it, and it goes, if you have a multiple personality disorder, press three, four, five, and six. If you're obsessive compulsive, press two repeatedly. And if you're depressed, press one, no one will answer. So then I called the suicide hotline. They told me to hold on. So somehow I get outsourced to Pakistan. So I said to Akbar, Akbar, I'm really depressed and suicidal. He asked me, do I know how to drive a van? speaking at uh, rehab centers. It's very cathartic for me. <laughs> now for me, cocaine was never a solution, unless I mixed it with water. <laughs> so so this, this Islamic girl comes up to me at, at Silver Hill one night after a talk, and she says, you know, last night I got really stoned, and I wanted to be very comforting and I said to her, well, what did you do to piss off your father and brother? <laughs> so I'm Jewish and I grew up in Brooklyn. I had a, I had a tough, tough time growing up. I think my parents hated me. My mother had more than said this after I was born. <laughs> My mother would put me on the school bus. I was homeschooled. <laughs> my, my father carried around a picture that came with his wallet. <laughs> and, I, and thinking back, I knew my parents hated me because my first bath toy was a toaster.
My, my neighborhood was very, very tough, too. The sign in the library said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I grew up uh, in Brooklyn, uh, you know, before it was fashionable. And I, and I lived in Richfield for, for 30 years before being Jewish was tolerated. <laughs> now, now, we have a really nice reform congregation in Richfield. I don't know why they call it reform. It's like we do something wrong. <laughs> we have a large Hispanic part of the congregation, and you can tell them they wear their yarmulkes backwards. <laughs> We also have an amazing replica of the Wailing Wall. <laughs> Speaking of walls, Donald Trump was asked how he thought the Mexicans felt about the wall. He said, don't get over it. <laughs> he, he, he keeps trashing him. Yesterday he tweeted, immigrants are like sperm. Millions get in, but only one works. <laughs> and he promised, he promised to return the 12 million illegal aliens back, Juan by Juan by Juan. <laughs> he told Melania's mother, she knew what she was getting into before she married me. And with regards to the NFL and kneeling, he just pissed off that Melania won't get on her knees. <laughs> but Melania, Melania struck back. She said to Donald, Donald, could you have the hole on the top of your penis made larger? I'd like you to be a little bit more open-minded. <laughs> and last but not least, Sarah, the huckster Huckabee Sanders, was asked, to explain Donald's use of the word indecent. And she said, according to the president, if it's in hard, if it's in long, and it's in deep, it's indecent. <laughs> now, women think that men just want to have sex if we buy them dinner. It's true, that's all we want. So, towards the end of the day, I'm, o I'm always wondering if there's going to be any sex, and if I'm going to be involved. <laughs> now, now, I'm on Match.com, and I have to say, initially, what I learned is, you have to A, see a picture, and actually speak to them. The first woman I went out with described herself as being petite. So we meet, she's a midget. The next woman, we had 20 emails going back and forth. She wouldn't give me her phone number. So we meet. Finally, it turns out she's deaf. <laughs> now, now, there's nothing wrong with the fact that she's deaf, except that she insisted on driving and speaking at this constantly. It scared the hell out of me. Now, eventually, I learned to sign. But like any relationship, we would we fought a lot. She would start to yell and scream, you know, like this. So just to piss her off, I would shut the lights out. <laughs> My wife and I were happy for 20 years. Then we met. <laughs> I, I can remember the first day, I asked her if I could kiss her on the cheek good night. She turned around and bent over. <laughs> we fought about sex a lot. I would say to her, you're too tight and your tits are too small. And she said, get off my back. <laughs> Speaking of Harvey Weinstein, He's had so many sexual allegations against him that he's going to run for president in 2020. <laughs> but in the interim, in the interim, he's uh, taking the job with Fox News. <laughs> and and uh, Kevin Spacey, 
He's the only fictional president to be impeached for sexual harassment. <laughs> and for myself, I'm going to have to stop watching late night TV. I've gotten involved with a lawsuit for a transvaginal mesh. <laughs> they, they've convinced me I'm suffering from mesh erosion. I have another lawsuit for mesothelioma. And I adopted an elephant. <laughs> Thank you. Good night.